Tanya for the fifth of Shvat, for Hei Shvat, is at the beginning of Perik Chof, chapter 20, which is on page 50. The number at the bottom of the page is 84. In the earlier chapters, Yutches Yutes, the Alter Rebbe explains how a person whose intelligence and understanding of godliness is not sufficient to produce a love for God in the revealed part of the heart, or even a conviction of love in the recesses of the heart, even such a person does have love and fear for God that comes from the faith, from that part of the neshama that is of God, because of the presence and from there, a person is inspired to do mitzvahs, and every mitzvah that he does is a living mitzvah that has wings that raise it upwards and allow it to rise. Until now, the al Rebbe has described how this emuna shows itself in the Mesiras Nefesh, that even the lowest of the low is, will, is, is, is ready to give his life, even if he's asked only to do a meaningless act of Aved or a meaningless statement about Aved even so he is afraid to touch this unholiness. But the Alter Rebbe has not explained yet how this applies to every other mitzvah. When a person's emuna is challenged, he becomes very strong in his emuna. But how does it affect other mitzvahs? And this is necessary in order to explain how it is that because of this capacity for Mesiras Nefesh, every Jew is capable of serving God on a daily basis in all mitzvahs, both with love and with fear. Perekhov. It is well known to all. Ki mitzvahs v'yaz horas that the mitzvah, the positive mitzvah, and the Azhara, the prohibition concerning idolatry, Shehem Shnei Dibre Sarishena, Onechi Vulayilcha, which are the first two of the Ten Commandments. I am God, your God, is the positive mitzvah. You shall have no other gods, is the negative mitzvah, the prohibition. So these two commandments, Haim Klolus Kola Kula, they represent the entire Torah. These two mitzvahs contain within themselves all the other mitzvahs of Torah. Ki dibur because the first commandment, I am God, your God, includes within itself, contains within itself all the 248 positive mitzvahs. I am God, your God means all of godliness is true. Every mitzvah is godliness. V'layilcha, and the prohibition, you shall have no other gods, Kailo kol shasa mitras leisese, it includes all 365 prohibitions, because every one of the prohibitions is ungodliness, other gods, idolatry. How is it that every sin is idolatry, and every mitzvah is emunah, because these two mitzvahs represent the entire Torah, that's why we heard these two commandments from God Himself, as the Gemara tells us, that these two first commandments we heard from God, and the rest God said to Moshe, and we heard it from Moshe. Why these two? Not the first three. Why not only one? Because these two are the entire Torah. So by hearing these two commandments from God, we actually heard the entire Torah from God. So to explain this well, thoroughly, how every mitzvah is faith in God, and how every sin is idolatry, to understand this well, we first have to mention something, at least briefly, of the essential oneness of God. God is one and only. 
Chol Maminim Shehu Levadehu, and everyone believes that he is alone and he is himself. Just as he was before the world was created, at that time certainly he was alone, he is equally alone, and, you, and he is the exclusive existence, the only existence, even after the world was created. And as it says, you are unchanged from the time before the, the world was created and, and remain unchanged after the world was created. Pirish hu mamush. Where does it say ato hu? It should say ato achalei nivra'ilam. And ato misha nivra'ilam. You are from before the world was created and you are after the world was created. Ato hu means... You are the same. You are literally the same, without any change at all. What kind of change could there possibly be? So there are two possibilities. One possibility is that in the act of creating, the Creator undergoes some change. Another possibility is that it's not the Creator that changes, but it's His status. Before He created, there was only Him. After he created, he added something. Creation is, is, a, is a productive thing. Now that God has created, he has added something, and there now is more than there was before. And that, too, is incorrect. So there's no change in God, not in himself, and also not in his status. Kedersiv, as it says, Ani havai I, God, have not changed. How is it that even though the world is created, the universe is created, yet no change has taken place? That's because this world, including also all the higher worlds, all of them created, they, they bring about, they cause no change in God's oneness, by coming into existence from nothingness. Their coming into existence out of nothingness brings no change in God's oneness. Just as God was alone, He was the only thing before they were created. He is equally alone and unique and exclusive after he creates them. First, al says, before they were created, and then he says, he is the same and still alone after he created them. So first he says, they were created, he baram, and then he says, she baram, after he created them. He baram is more passive, she baram is more active. So that al is saying, that this unchanging status of God remains unchanged even from one extreme to the other. There was a time before the world was not only not created by God, but not created at all. Not only hadn't God invested himself into the creation, but even before God invests himself in the creation, when the creation takes place effortlessly, which is a higher level of creation. On that level, God was certainly one, and he remains the same and unchanged, and still one, not only when the world does come into existence, but even after God invests himself in creation, in the more active sense. Even on that lower level, when God is involved in creating, even there he is unchanged. Mishum... And this is because kula kamekelachoshiv, all existence is insignificant to him, ukaayin veefes mamosh, and it is like nothingness, void, which is even more than nothing, ki hisavus kol ha'ela mesalyena v'tachtena ma'ayin liyesh, because the coming into being of all the of all the worlds, the highest as well as the lowest, 
They all come into existence out of nothingness. Vichayusam vikiyumam hamikaimam and their life and their sustainer, that which keeps them in existence. That prevents them from returning to the absolute nothingness, which was their original condition. What is this life and what is this preservation? Is merely the word of God and the breath of his mouth, Hamelubish Bahem, that is clothed within the creation. In other words, the involvement on God's part in creation is merely an involvement of a, of a spoken word and the breath of his mouth, which does not bring any change because of its extreme insignificance. It doesn't bring any change in the one who utters the word or who breathes the breath from his mouth, as we'll explain more thoroughly, more at length in tomorrow's Shia Mirtashem. In the Hayyim Yayim, for Hei Shvat, for the fifth day of Shvat, the Rebbe writes that a person should say the letters, the words of Torah um, constantly. You should say the words of Tehillim or, or memorize Mishnayis whenever he can. And this is in order to strengthen the existence of the world. And also in order to save himself from the punishment of the grave, or kafakela, as it says earlier in, in Tanya, what these punishments come for, and what they are meant to, to remove, the, the stains or the blemishes of the soul, by saying um, uh, copious words of Torah, of Tillim, of Mishnayis, we remove those blemishes and save ourselves from that from that suffering and also the, the letters of Torah that we say constantly help us merit and deserve the highest revelations of godliness